Two Sweet Wrestling Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It is June 29th. It is episode 24 of the Two Sweet Wrestling Podcast. I am back. I wasn't able to be here last week, but I am back and I am ready to go today. Is it okay for fans to hijack matches? Daniel Bryan, should he go to New Japan Pro Wrestling? Smackdown, do they have too much talent on Smackdown? And Roman Reigns. Brock Lesnar again at SummerSlam. Oh, oh, oh. I'm gonna break that down. But first, let's get to some house cleaning. You can find me on YouTube at OMG Corey B. Type in the space bar. Co- OMG space Corey space B. Excuse me. I will be right there. You can find me on Twitter at OMG Corey B. And at Two Sweet Pod. That's the number two sweet pod. So. We're going to get right into this thing. We're going to start with a too fast, too furious topic of the day. And that is Alistair Black versus Tommaso Ciampa. Ah, I'm about to start the clock right now. We've got a minute and 30. We're about to do this right now. So the question coming out of TakeOver was, or at least one of the questions coming out of TakeOver was, what's next for Alistair Black and what's next for Ciampa and Gargano? So... We have found the answer for what's next for Black and Ciampa, and that is a matchup. At least an assumed matchup, a build for the heavyweight title. And I cannot tell you how excited I am to see these two go at it. I gotta say, it creates a weird dynamic. You got the dark character with Alistair Black already, and you have the dark character of Ciampa. It creates a weird dynamic, but it creates a good dynamic as well. I think this is going to be a fantastic matchup to start. But I think it's going to be an even better build. The build-up already has been great. Looking at the recent episode of NXT, I love the back and forth that they had going on. And we're kicked off. And I like I even like the back and forth they have going on on Twitter as well so I expect this to be a big match and I honestly think this is leading to this is how I feel at the moment it may change going forward but I honestly think that this is leading to Ciampa as the NXT world champion and that will just destroy the crowd take the crowd off which would be great because that would eventually lead to Ciampa Gargano 3 So that is a minute and 30, as you can hear. And Ciampa Gargano 3, I'll be looking forward to that. It will be for the title. I cannot wait for it. So, all right, here we go. Daniel Bryan, would it be best for wrestling if Daniel Bryan signed with New Japan Pro Wrestling or signed one of those open contracts that allowed him to work everywhere? I'm about to get into that right now. The short answer, in my opinion, is yes, but I'm about to get into the details right here. First up, look, New Japan needs to make a splash. It needs to make a big splash. So, the only way in wrestling history for a company to come up, at least this is just just since I've been watching it, you got to sign somebody big. And New Japan has had some big signings. You got Jericho in there. And you got your other guys in there. You got guys already there. You got Omega already there. Okada already there. You got big names already there. But the two biggest names to sign would be a John Cena or a Daniel Bryan. I'm going to go all the way back here. Going all the way back to WCW. When WCW first had Nitro on the air. They wanted to make a big splash. And the big splash was signing Lex Luger from WWE. That was huge at the time. I don't know if you wasn't really alive to see it or wasn't don't really remember that. It was a huge deal at the time. So they got in big when they signed Lex Luger. And then they got in even bigger when they signed Hulk Hogan. That's when you knew that, okay, this is something here. This is interesting now. And when they took over is when the NWO happened in the rest of history. Now, looking at from a New Japan standpoint, 
I'm not here to say that New Japan would overtake WWE by any means. But if they would have signed a Daniel Bryan, look, the game would change. Big time, especially in the USA. People would start to, a whole lot more people would start to notice New Japan Pro Wrestling. And they are trying to improve their presence in the United States. And what better way to do it than to sign Daniel Bryan to a contract? It is interesting because the latest reports have that, have said, excuse me, that WWE is not willing to put Daniel Bryan into a long term main event storyline because they want him to sign on the contract first to which i guess i i get that from wwe's standpoint but this is truly interesting because obviously no matter wherever daniel bryan goes no matter whether he leaves for the independent scene new japan wherever ring of honor tna wherever or if he stays with WWE, I wouldn't have a problem with it whatsoever. Whatever he chooses, it's just fine with me. But for the sake of wrestling, I would love to see him go away from WWE because one other reason is that it would force WWE to look at New Japan and see that they have a legitimate star on their hands that came from WWE. And looking back at the WCW point that I made, look, when Luger and Hogan went to WCW, it forced WWE to get better. And obviously, losing Daniel Bryan, while it wouldn't put you under, while you would still be the number one company in the world, it would force WWE to improve itself, in my opinion. And maybe the Daniel Bryan thing could lead to other things as well. And I think that would really force WWE to get out of its same old standpoint of staying in gear not really caring about anything because they're making money hand over fist and it would improve wwe's product in my opinion so looking at daniel brown signing with new japan i would really love for that to happen i would really like for it to happen on several reasons and look i want it to happen and we'll see how it goes because it's september 1st that's when the contract comes up, and that is very interesting in itself because that is the date of all in. So we'll see how it all turns out. Next up, does SmackDown have too much talent on its hands? I know that seems like a ridiculous thing to say, but it is so much truth into it if you look into it. So starting off, we got to go all the way back to the Superstar Shakeup brand split or what have you and look all of us are thinking that i hope smackdown doesn't get screwed over obviously i was thinking that a lot of people are thinking that because look that's just been the way it has been in these brand splits smackdown gets screwed over but obviously wwe was looking for the deal with fox and it seems here that they wanted to beef up smackdown as much as possible after the superstar shakeup we all said that SmackDown went in the landslide because they did win in the landslide. But the thing that we overlooked here was that SmackDown got way too much talent because there isn't a week that goes by that I don't look at Twitter or I don't say, man, why is this person not on SmackDown? Why is that tag team not on SmackDown? Just for context, the bar. Where the heck is the bar? Where have they been? Like, like seriously, she Sheamus and Cesaro, two of the best workers in WWE, where have they been? I see in Almas. Where has he been? You know, he had a, a few backstage segments, and he's just been out of there for a few weeks. The Usos were just out of there for a long time before this few, this, this recent few got kicked up. Ty Dillinger, he's just surfing around and catering somewhere. And even Charlotte Flair, she was out of there for a long time. It's like, where's Charlotte? At the end of the day, look, I think they have to, I think SmackDown is going to have to go on a motto that NXT goes on. From the standpoint that NXT alternates their storylines week to week, and SmackDown doesn't have to exactly do that but there has to be some kind of model to where everybody is seeing a little bit of time somehow and i know it's only two hours for smackdown which is a drag because if you're gonna put all of the talent on one show it would 
It have to be the one with three hours uh, or else we're going to get into the situation that we're in. So there has to be some kind of model to where we alternate time between all of this talent. I mean, obviously, the world champion has to be on the show, you know, every week in the world championship storyline has to be on there every week. But we have to find a better way. And look, I mean, I'm not here to say that SmackDown is a bad show. I've enjoyed SmackDown. It has been very enjoyable the past however many weeks. But when you got guys like the bar just sitting in the back, you got to do something with them or else trade them. You got to trade them back to Raw at the least just to get them on TV. So we have to have something here because SmackDown just has way too much talent and... At the at the luck of the draw, I mean, some sometimes somebody's on a on television programming one week, and they're not the other week. And the crazy thing is that I seen a report that the bar wasn't on there because creative had nothing for them. And I'm like, bruh, the, the bar arguably the best tag team in all of WWE. You don't have anything for those guys. Come on now. So something else to improve when from the standpoint that more people have to be on SmackDown. The show itself is fantastic, but it's tough seeing so many talented guys and girls not be on television programming. So moving on here, we got two topics and I'm just going to blend them all into one. Is it okay to hijack matches? And we got Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. So we're going to start with the hijacking of matches. I see a lot of people always complaining about this, but I tend to always look at situations, especially situations in wrestling, and I tend to sit down and say, okay, there's a problem, but instead of complaining about this problem, how could we fix this problem? So I look at hijacking matches. In theory, is it okay to hijack matches? No, it's not. Because these guys and girls are putting their bodies on the line every week. And I send their families every week. And it's just stuff that, that they get out there and you have a beach ball going around. And all of that stuff where they're chanting random stuff. And in theory, no. I don't like it in theory. However... When WWE tells the story leading up to the match for the fans to hijack the match, then that's WWE's fault. Look, I feel sorry for the performance that are in the ring, but when WWE tells a story, we want you to hate Brock Lesnar. And the fans already hate Roman Reigns. Look, what do you think the fans are going to do? Well, you got a bunch of smart fans there already. You're going to get them to hate Brock Lesnar, and they already hate Roman Reigns. They already hate the fact that the, the championship is not on the television. And you're going to put that person in the ring with Roman Reigns? And then the very next week, or the very next month, you put him in there with some more Joe, but you have a slow match to which the fans are going to chant beat the traffic because the, the, the pay-per-view went on for forever. So, after that... You have this situation with Jinder Mahal. And here we go again. The fans already hate Jinder Mahal. Why put him in there with Roman Reigns? And you put him in there in Chicago. Of course, the, the fans are going to crap on the match. When it comes to Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns, when it comes to Jinder Mahal and Roman Reigns, look, I don't get everything right about wrestling, but I had that right from the very beginning where I said, watch out, WWE. This is a dangerous road. So... Look, in general, I don't like the hijacking of matches, but when WWE pretty much tells you we don't care what you think, we're going to do whatever it is we want to do, then look, they asked for it. So that leads me right into my next point. Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, my goodness, help me. Just insanity. That's, that's, that's the definition of doing the same thing twice and expecting a different result so here we go again this is Roman Brock 4 Roman Brock they, yes this would be if it went down at SummerSlam this would be Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar 4 and look this ain't 
Okada and Omega Force. Goodness. This doesn't need to need to be a fourth match here. So I, if you were gonna put the title on Roman Reigns, anyways, you might as well have did it at WrestleMania. That's my point all along. Look, they lost all of their goodwill with the people that were hanging on. I was a person that hung on and was like, okay, the title is gonna go on Roman Reigns regardless at some point. Anyways, just go ahead and put him on him at WrestleMania. Just go ahead and get it over with. So we can get a full-time feud going here. So, no, they refuse to do that. So we get the report here from the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. And apparently the build is the same thing from WrestleMania. They're going to try to get the crowd to hate Brock Lesnar. And Roman Reigns, even on this past episode of Monday Night Raw, he even went back to the crutch. And I'm not going to keep saying Roman Reigns. I'm going to say WWE Creative because Roman Reigns is not writing the promos himself. WWE, WWE Creative even had Roman Reigns to go back to the crutch of, you know, Brock Lesnar is not here. Are you? We hate Brock Lesnar. He never shows up. And, like, it's just mind-boggling. Like... Here we go again. They're going to try to build sympathy up for Roman Reigns. Just in having him say Brock Lesnar is not here every week. You're trying to build sympathy for the person that's saying it if they're facing off for Brock Lesnar. And look at this point. What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't want to feel sympathy for Roman Reigns. And there's a lot of people that feel that way. There's a lot of people that hate him regardless. That's obvious. But I'm at a standpoint to where they've given up on the heel turn. You know what? So be it. I'm not going to say that that anymore because it's the obvious way to go. They've given up on it. But it, if you're going to give up on the heel turn, at least have Roman Reigns be this bad, take no characters character, and just go around beating everybody up instead of coming out saying, I'm the uncrowned champion in you know, Roman Brock Lesnar never really beat me. And he's looking for sympathy. I'm like, look, just go beat people up. Have him say like two or three lines just have him beat the heck out of people left and right. I would enjoy that. But instead, they're doing this thing and they're looking for the sympathy. And like, here we are. We're heading into Extreme Rules. It's going to be Roman Reigns versus Bobby Lashley. Now, it, who knows who wins there? Most likely Roman Reigns, but who knows? We thought Roman was going to win at WrestleMania. At this point, it doesn't matter because you're going to New York, and whether it's Bobby Lashley or Roman Reigns, you've already killed Bobby Lashley with the Sami Zayn sister storyline. He had some momentum coming into WWE, and Bobby Lashley is just not the same. They have him under these written promos, and he's just not a guy that thrives in that situation. Just go back and listen, look at his TNA Impact Wrestling stuff. You'll see a guy that thrive. But going back to the topic, if it's Roman Reigns, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter continued and went on to say that, well, if the crowd turns on the match, then Braun Strowman is a likely backup plan to cash in. And I'm like, what are you doing, WWE? What do you think is going to happen? When you tell the same story, what do you think is going to happen in New York City? Look, New York, Philadelphia, Chicago, Canada, England, and I could be missing somewhere else. If you go to those places, they're going to boo Roman Reigns. And if you tell a story to where you get people to hate Brock Lesnar, they, you, you're going to have a match where people crap on the match. This is not a situation to where Seth Rollins is in the match. Sure, you'd have a perfect storyline if you told this situation with Seth Rollins. The people love Seth Rollins. He's had an incredible run up until now. And it would make perfect sense to throw him into the Universal title match with Brock Lesnar. But who cares about perfect sense when it's WWE and you're making money hand over fist. You're making billions of dollars hand over fist. So at this point, they really do not give a crap about what we think, what's right, or what make what would make the perfect sense because they're getting the money anyways. So at the end of the day, the only thing the fans can do is crap on the match. And that's what's gonna happen at SummerSlam if they go with Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. So that 
my friends, it's the end of this podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, you want to hit me up. I'm on Twitter at OMG Corby at Two Sweet Pod. I respond back and follow back to all wrestling fans.